Hi, I'm Jadi and I'm going to show you another source code, a cool one, Linux kernel. Based on this news, the news was Linux moving to 6.99 or even C11. It means C version 1999 or even C version 2011. What was the story? We are going to review it. Also, we will have a look at the differences between the C versions. Also, we will check the source code of the Linux, go through it and see what is going on. It's a good opportunity for you to first understand the news deeply, see, a uh, second, see how you can dive into something. We all saw this news, but it's an opportunity to learn more. And third, it's easy to go through source codes, read them, look at them. You don't need to start from the beginning. In my other Reading the Source Code series, you can see this. You can find where you want to uh, change. You can understand parts you need. You don't need to read from the beginning. Although, if you are interested in learning the uh, Source Code of the Linux or Linux kernel, there are different books. One is Understanding Linux kernel. I have already searched for this. This is the book. It's an interesting read. And as we see, most of the difficulties comes from being portable, being possible to run on different hardwares and this kind of stuff, having lots of drivers. And most of the books covers that. And you will see that uh, one of the most important things to understand the Linux kernel is understanding different architectures unless you are zooming in one specific place checking the queuing that way you can just learn the parts you need but if you want to understand the whole code at least to some extent it's important to be aware that you should understand hardware also there is one nice heavily documented linux kernel it's an old PDF, a heavy, heavily commented Linux kernel source code. It's a Linux source code with lots of comments added to make it more understandable. And as you know, Linux source code is written in C. It's good to learn C. Whenever you have some time, spend it and learn something new. It can be C, Perl, JavaScript, a framework, whatever. But make yourself familiar with different things and you will use them someday. You are learning how to program. You are not learning exactly the C itself. Anyway, this was the first email which started the whole thing. Not the first one, but this is a threat. Jacob Kaschel submitted one patch for the kernel in the USB area. This is a diff file. It shows that in the new version which I'm submitting, these lines are added. These lines are removed and these lines are kept as they were before. His problem was there was a loop here, list for each entry. It was going through each entry and after this is run, he was using the variable uh, rec as the entry he were using request or something. But he saw that sometimes we can have weird situations. The normal one, these are the new ones which are added. So you can remove this. This was the main code before his patch. And this uh, Magento ones were there. He was saying list for each entry, check every entry if request request equals underscore request, finish the loop. So when you reached here, hopefully request should be equal to this. If not, do this. Go out and stop doing whatever you are going to do. First, see, real programmers are not afraid of using go-tos. We are not real programmers if we are afraid. And you cannot just use go-tos now. Wait till you become a real programmer. So he added this. He has seen some weird situations. For example, when there is nothing here and you are comparing this with this, you, are, you don't have anything in this loop, 
So this won't run, this won't have a value, but you are checking it later. Not very nice. He added this. He said, I have a Boolean variable. It's called found, and I initiate it as false. When the loop starts, whenever I reach this condition, previously I was just breaking the loop. Now, whenever I reach this condition, I will say, do these two things. Set found as true and break the loop. Later, he can check if not found, stop whatever you are doing. So if found, continue whatever we had there. Not very bad, but Torvalds didn't like it. Torvalds says, this is not very clear what you are doing. This is not a nice code. Why you are doing this? And he started describing why he are using this. Let's see what he said. Let's check this list for each entry in the Linux source code. I have the Linux source code here. Let's search it for list for each entry. You find it on the C lang. We don't need it there. Ah, uh, list for each entry. Let's start with something else. Let's start with. Uh, struct list head, where we define this struct list head. In the different types, we define something like this. You know, we are writing with a pure C. And at the moment, we know that kernel is written in C89, the 89th versions of C. This is a very nice struct. Mm. Huge motorcycle. What we do is define the struct called list head, which contains struct list head itself with two pointers, next and previous. So if you have something like this, it means you have something like this list head, which has a next pointer, a previous pointer, and this points to another list head. Right? So, in this list head can point to the next one and to the previous one. This list head also can point to previous list head and the next one. You can see we are creating a structure, double sided, which is called a double linked list. It's a list of some entries linked to each other, doubled previous and next. So you can go forward, go back and have a very nice struct. Why this is useful? In some places you can use them. For example, you have another struct, say USB devices, as we had in our example. This struct has a name, has an address, what it's called, whatever data you need for a USB device. And you can add another variable to this struct, which is struct list head, for example, node. This way, if you call USB node, you can point to another variable of the same kind. So this way, you can connect your USB entries to each other. Practically, this is making easy to make a double-sided linked list from any entry you have. Let's do another search, for example, for the same thing I said, note. First, see, most of the finds are in architectures. Architectures for ARM have this. As I said, if you want to understand the Linux kernel, it's always important to understand architectures. Many of the code is related to different architectures, power PC architecture, ARM architecture, and different things. And then it's about drivers. Different drivers are using the same thing I just described. But even in other places, for example, in Net, NetXDB uses the same thing. Or while we are in the net. Anyway, any of them, you can just open them and use them. Uh, open them and use them to describe the same thing. Let's open one which is not very large. For example, this one. 
it says in the lips. Ah, uh, let's go for the power, which is more fun, maybe. It says, ah, interesting. I recorded this once, and this was the same random thing I went for. Anyway, uh, it says I have a new struct, which is called memzone bmr3 represent a bitmap used for one for one populated memory zone it's called this and it has a structure listed called nodes this way if i have one mem zone bm3 here i can connect it to the next block of the memory mem zone something and whenever I want to traverse them, I can check the nodes and see the previous and see the next one. This way, I have a way to make double linked list from everything. This is how the memory is used. But another look at this one. Here, it has something which is called EQ and uses the variable Q inside it, struct Q inside it, to traverse on that one and you can find different things let's go and check the same thing we had here for example this one I remember seeing something about the Bluetooth which was very nice let's see if I can find it open in editor and here I can try the, for example, Bluetooth. No, not on drivers. I got another one. I want in net Bluetooth, which is a nicer one to check. Anyway, let's open one of them. Okay, it looks like this is doing something disconnecting HCI CFM. Whatever. It's getting a variable HCI connections and trying to disconnect one of them or something like this. It works on the HCI CB. So we define one of them, call it CB go through all the HCICB list, all the data we've got, and one by one, let's CB point one of them. So we have left lots of HCICB list, another HCICB list, another HCICB list, another HCICB list, and inside this, I have a struct which is called list. And this list points to the next one and the previous one. It, this one has it too. To the next one and the previous one. To the next one and the previous one. Next one and the previous one. Next one. So I have a list of all this. This macro list for each entry goes through them one by one and puts them into the CB. Then I checked if, uh, if CB disconnects CFM, do this and finish it. But where? The problem is, the problem arises when we are defining this variable outside the scope. This is what in the, these emails, uh, Mr. Jacob Koshel started explaining to uh, Linus Torvalds and told him that, see, I'm defining this CB variable here. Then I'm defining this loop. There is a situation that this loop is empty. This variable is empty. Nothing is there. So I will pass it. If I use this CB here, that would make a bug. Because this pointer is something to is pointing to something random in the memory in the hope that I will set it correctly in this loop. But if I just go over this loop because nothing is there or another combina com uh, 
another conditions. For example, when the last element is reached and I'm using the next one, this CV is meaningless here. That's why he did this patch and checked manually if we found something and said, if I found something, do this. Torvalds got the point, but his answer was, this is a regular bug, plain and simple. But at the end of the loop, it will not point at any entry at all. So I understood the bug. But I think this kind of fix should have been done entirely separately. Because in this patch, you are uh, solving your own issue, ugly and dirty, but you are solving your own issue. But this is not a good way because every single list for each entry should do kind of the same thing. So we have to fix this separately on all the cases. Then he says the problem is in C89, which we are using, we cannot declare variables in the loops. You know, nowadays in the C programming, we are used to this, writing for int i while i smaller than 10, do i++ plus plus, and then do this. I'm defining i here. So if I use i here, that would be an error. But in C89, you cannot do this. In C89, oh sorry, equals zero. In uh, C89, you had to define i here. And then initialize it here and work and i was, had a meaning here. But when working with pointer, as you saw, this is more problematic. So suggestion is going to C99 style, where you can declare variables in the loops. So for list for each entry, and all other ones fundamentally always uh, solve this. Now they are fundamentally always leak the last head entry out of the loop. I'm looking at using std equals GNU 99. So when compiling, we can ask GCC to compile with 99, which fixes the whole leak final indoor pointer outside the loop. They have to do a small change in that function too, but it will work every, wherever it is used. But Torvalds adds that, but we still don't do GNU 99 because we had some odd problems with some ancient GCC version that broke document initialization. Then he asked ARMED if that was the only case and if that is solved. When talking about C99 and everything, we have to know that C is a language and it's evolved through the time. I found my old C book, C Programming Language, by Brian Kernighan and Dennis Ritchie. This is published in 79, I think, 78, the year I was born. <laughs> and explains the C78. Then, they made revisions, they added features, and Linux is using the C89 to compile. C99 came 10 years later and has some new features. Mainly, you can define inline functions, you can intermingle declarations and code. You can do that for int i think. You don't need to define I first. So this will solve this leaking of the blocks. I repeat for the last time, the problem was defining variable here, then going through this loop and then using that variable. Sorry, that was not a variable. Ah, the variable is not shown here because it's a diff file, but we were defining some rec variable here. So, and we were using the rec here, which is wrong. So, C99 solved that one. Torvalds asked Arndt if they can upgrade and if that was the only issue with the documentation. Arndt answered back, I'm pretty sure this was the only thing. 
they were using GCC 4.9. Now we are on GCC 11 something. On that ancient version, they were getting these errors. And even he adds that GCC 8 and higher also support SDD GNU 18 using the 2018 version of the C or even the upcoming 2.2X, uh, which we are not sure if it's going to 22, 23 or in general 2X for the now. So we can use this, but we will break the support for GCC version 5, 6 and 7, which is not that important if you want my idea. Torvalds answers back. That's okay. So we should be able to basically convert STD GNU 89 into GNU uh, 11 with this setting set. No shift negative value with no expected change of behavior. I would love to finally move forward on this. I think the loop iterators, the one we talked about, are the biggest user visible thing but there might be others. Also, at the end he adds that, and some Googling seems to show that the reason for shift negative value is that with C99, the semantics changed for targets that weren't tools uh, complement. We really don't care. He adds that, of course, the C standard being the bunch of incompetents they are, they in the process apparently made left shifts undefined. Christ, they keep on making the same mistake over and over. What was the definition of insanity again? The lesson is if you are Linus, you are still Googling to see what, how things work. Don't be afraid of Googling. I've seen people who say, oh, I have studied Python. I've written two programs. And still, when I want to loop through something, I have to Google. When I want to open a file, I have to Google. Everyone Googles. Don't be afraid of Googling. The point is you should understand what you are doing. Second, if you are Torvalds, you can call C standard makers incompetence. Strange. The end, Arndt answers back that yes, I think that is correct. So it says yes, I think with changing to the compiling with GNU version 11, which is GNU, to, uh, which is the C standard 2011, and no shift negative values, nothing should change. So don't be surprised. If you see the next kernel compiled using a newer version of C, not even C99, but maybe C2011. And don't be afraid of looking at the source code. You can see this is an opportunity. When you have a news, read it and dig more into it. It was not difficult to go through the source code, search for things. If you are using VS Code or whatever you are using, you can always check things for example say show me the declaration of this thing it will show you how this is defined for example this hci sp list and you will go deeper and deeper into the code and see how things work this is a nice way to dive into understanding a better code and also when you are reading something like a linux kernel you will understand better how professionals are using C. Be with me, subscribe, tell your friends, that will make me happy. We can talk why you may want to make me happy. But anyway, have fun. I was judging.